Yes, we are. Okay, we are live now. It says meeting is streaming live. Woo! Okay, well, I am Mary Fulton. Uh, today I'm dressed up like Wonder Woman um, because it is Wonder Woman Day, if you didn't know. And so it was on my heart about a month ago. I wanted to, I thought, I was thinking in my head, who is a Wonder Woman in my life? And um, Nicole was the first person that came to my mind. She has an amazing story of some things she's endured, but I'd first like her to just introduce herself and who she is and how we met a long time ago. And this is Nicole. Take it away. Say hello, Miss Nicole. I'm going to quickly tag and make sure we are on Facebook and everything's going good. So you just take it away. Introduce yourself. I am Nicole Houghton Childs. I am now a school principal in uh, Long Beach Unified. Me, me. Uh, <laughs> but I recently got a promotion. I don't. I was going to tell you that, Miss Fulton. <laughs> That's how I met you. So I still call you Miss Fulton. Isn't that funny? I am now going to be in the district office as a um, director, supervisor. So I'm so excited about that. That's in August, and I am just humbled and honored that you would ask me to be on the show, and that I would be the first person that you think of when you say it's Wonder Woman Day. Yes, for having me. I'm so excited that you're here. And I think Nicole and I met, um, we were trying to calculate it back in 2004. <laughs> I was 24. <laughs> and she was a vice principal. And she came in to watch me. What was it called when you came to watch a teacher? It's been a long time. What's it called? It's called a stall an evaluation. Uh an evaluation. I still remember you left me a little note on a post-it in the back with a little happy face that I did a good job. That was my first teaching job. I was teaching kindergarten back at Grant Elementary School in Long Beach. <laughs> so, um, and I got to meet you and you were so encouraging, just a great vice principal, great energy. You were just a bright, shining beacon of light. So when I think of you, I think of light, I think of strength, I think of beauty and so many ways um, inside and outside, you just like, you just exuberate that. So I don't know if you know that, and I don't think I've ever said that to you, but I'm, I just want you to know that you are just an amazing woman. And I, I've always looked up to you. And anytime I saw you football field, whatever, you were just <laughs> shining and those, your beautiful smile. So um, we have a few people on, we have Celia is on and Roya. Um, from my team, they're they're waving to you. So um, I'm gonna let you go ahead and share your story and and you know just go ahead, go. <laughs> Mary, you you put a lot on me right now, so I'm a bit nervous. But I see that in you. You are very much a beacon of light. So I like minds. That's what it is, right? <laughs> So I thank you for having me because my story is not one that is unique. It is one that I wish was something that we didn't talk, have to talk about often, but we do because one in eight women I understand will be affected by uh, breast cancer. And so I, when I initially was diagnosed with breast cancer, I did not want to share my story. I didn't know what I was going to go through. I didn't know how I was going to feel. And I just didn't want to talk about it. Somewhere along half, I, I had to do eight sessions of chemo and I'll go back to my story. I just want to tell you this for a second. Uh, yes, I want you to. I, I had to do eight sessions of chemo and about the midpoint, I said, I need to be telling other women about this because as moms, as women, sometimes we just don't take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I needed to put that story out there so that we could take care of our, to tell more women to take care of themselves. So my story begins back in, well, I don't know where it begins. I'll tell you that I follow the rules. Mm -hmm. I was told that when you turn 40 years old, you take a you get a mammogram every year. I did that uh, for five years. I was 45, I believe at the time. So January, 2020 was, I had a mammogram. I didn't hear anything back. And when you don't hear anything back, that's everything is supposed to be good. So all good. We went through that whole crazy 2020. Um, I even had COVID in October. <laughs> that was really crazy, but I got through that. I didn't have any real issues with COVID. But in November, that was in October, in November, I had this pain in my breast, in my right breast. It felt like I had run into a brick wall or a bookcase or something. So I kept trying to figure out what did I run into? What did I, how did I hurt myself? But I, I didn't ignore that pain. I, I did a breast exam and I felt a lump. And I asked my husband to fill the lump and my husband said, yeah, I feel something, but it could be anything, it could be anything. 
Well, that didn't sit well with me. Mm -mm. That was in November. So I called my doctor and I said, hey, I don't know what this is, but I really want to check this out. My doctor said, well, you just had a mammogram in January, but come on in and we'll check it out anyway. So she did a self-exam and said, or she did a breast exam and she said, yeah, I feel something. Let's get this checked out. Mm -hmm. So I scheduled another mammogram. And then um, at that time, when they find something concerning, they'll do a biopsy. That was on December the 4th. I have to go back to this. That pain that I felt, I never felt it again. I felt it that one day. That was it. Are you serious? That was it. That one day. I know that was God saying, listen to your body. Mm. So gosh, that's, I'm, I just have to say that. So that was November, December 4th. I got the biopsy. That was on a Friday. <laughs> and I don't know why, but I knew something just wasn't right. So I was waiting on the call from the doctor. And on Tuesday, I'm at work. And on Tuesday, the doctor calls me and says, um, it's cancer. So I don't remember how I felt. I don't remember what, I don't remember what through, went, went through my mind. I remember calling my husband and telling my close family, but I don't really remember what I felt. From there, what happens is you have to go see a breast surgeon who tells you about the type of cancer that you have. So the breast surgeon told me what the type of cancer that I was and that it was in this early stages and um, that I was going to have to go through a process of chemo. That really concerned me. The first thing I thought about, honestly, was am I going to lose my hair, which is the simplest of things. Maybe not to everybody, but for me, it was pretty easy. But uh, that was the first thing I thought about. I don't know why. I don't know why I didn't think about all the other things that you go through. But first thing, I'm going to lose my hair. <laughs> um, it's, it's just what I thought. So you go to a breast, I went to the breast surgeon, the breast surgeon exp explains to me that I have triple negative breast cancer, which means there are breast cancers that feed off of hormones. The cancer that I have does not. So chemo is the only um, route to kill that cancer. I, had, I have a teacher on my campus who has a son-in-law who is into cancer research, he's a doctor. So I went to him for free. He told me, this is what you need to do. You've got to do this chemo. I guess I still wasn't, by this time I had seen my oncologist who told me we were going to start a regimen of chemo. We'd start December 31st. And um, I guess I just still wasn't ready. I wanted to hear something different. <laughs> I, um, I, saw, I went to see a, a cancer, a person who researches in, a researcher of cancer He's in Signal Hill and um, he's outside of my insurance. So I paid a little bit of a, of a price, but I don't know if you can pay for a peace of mind. Mm -hmm. So what this doctor did for me is he, we did another biopsy. He tested the chemo that the doctors had said they would use on the cancer cells. And mm -hmm. it was, um, um, the cancer cells were going away. That's what I'm trying to say. I can't figure out my words right now, but the cancer cells were leaving. They were doing, the chemo was doing what it was supposed to do. No, so that gave not. me, yes. <sighs> so that gave me peace of mind to start my cancer, my chemo regimen. And I started that uh, January 14th. I had eight rounds every two weeks. I, I remember being so anxious, so nervous that it would be nights that I would say to my husband, I, I would wake him up in the middle of the night. Like, can you just pray with me? Mm -hmm. And he, he did, and we, he would pray for me and I would just be calm and go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And I realized at that moment that I needed to be prayer. I, I knew it before, but sometimes you just things slap you in the face. Mm -hmm. So I was going to be prayerful. I was going to ask that. I knew I had to go through some, I was going to be uncomfortable at times. I might even be sick. I might hurt, but I, I, my prayer was to not be so anxious to be, um, even if I had to go through things that I was going to remember that I had more good days than I had bad days. And just to find the beautiful moments, not in the chemo treatments or cancer, but don't forget to live, if that makes sense. So I, in that time, I feel like I'm just rambling, but there's so many things I want to share. I'm not, you're, you're amazing. <laughs> I'm just in that time, I was able to stay home from work. So I was able to stay home with my family. So I remember I was saying, find the, find the beautiful moments. I, I, I carved out time 
um, to find what I was thankful for every single day. And I was thankful that I was able to be at home. I was thankful to be with my family. There were times that I felt bad, but I was here with, with, with my family. So um, I, I, I'm glad you're giving me this platform. My message to everybody, don't forget about yourselves. Don't forget about taking care of you. As moms, we get the doctor's appointments we, for the, our kids. We get them to their sporting events, to school, their homework, but we don't always take care of ourselves. I was doing the screenings, so that's one. Yes, I was taking care of myself in that way. Um, but I, I just want to tell women to remember to do that for themselves and to be an expert for their own body. So when I had that pain, I could have written it off and said, oh, well, the pain went away. But it bothered me enough that I needed to check it out. So I just want people to remember that you are the expert of your body, even when doctors are telling you things they are experts, but they're not the experts of your body. So you may have to just really listen to your body. And I want to say something else. In this process, there were times that I had to advocate for myself. I had a great care team, an amazing care team, but they're not always um, doing things exactly for you. So I had to speak up for myself. I'll give you one example. After you go through chemo, you have to have breast surgery. So I have an oncologist and I, my oncologist, I have a breast surgeon. Some people can have a surgical oncologist. I did not have that. I had to have, I had two different ones. So my surgeon was trying to set up this, uh, a surgery with my plastic surgeon so that I could have reconstruction at the same time. And they were putting my surgery off for about eight weeks. I said, absolutely not. I need to, I've been anxious since December the 8th, since I found out this was cancer. I need to know that this cancer is gone. Excuse me. So I wrote emails to the doctors like, no, we've got to move this surgery. We have to do something. And in that time, my oncologist called and said, no, you're going to move that surgery up and you're going to make sure that that cancer is out of her. So it wasn't about their timetable. It was about what was best for me. And I was so glad my oncologist was on my team and was on my side but I, I had to advocate for myself. So I just want to tell women, don't, not just women, everybody, don't be afraid to advocate for yourself and for your body. Mm. And that's my story. <laughs> I love it, ma'am. So I didn't know that you were sick. And actually you guys are going to laugh at me because you know, I'm like the TikTok lady, but that's where I found Nicole again. Like, I mean, I just, I, I just hadn't seen her on Facebook and I was going to my TikTok and there was Nicole doing TikTok. And I was like, yeah, she's my girl. She's TikTok in a way. And she's a principal and she's crazy like me. I'm like, I'm not the only crazy person. <laughs> and I saw on her TikToks that you had cancer, that you were talking about making it through in another day. And I was just like, blown away by you taking a hardship in your life and like you said grabbing on a gratitude and also taking it and making it your message you know I've been doing some studying and different things and um they say your mess is your message and and not that this is a you didn't cause this mess or whatever but we all have things that we go through whether they're things that we've experienced that we've caused for ourselves or health problems or mistakes or, or whatever it is. And um, they kept saying, your mess is your message. And when we're able to embrace things that happen to us or whatever, and, and really take it and share it with others and grab on the gratitude, um, that's when we can be heroes for other people. And that's why you are a wonder woman and you are a hero and you're going through life as a mom of two kids, wife, a principal, like, and now I know you're changing roles, but man, I could never be a principal. Um, there's so much coming at you. I've watched you guys like from behind the scenes and I'm like, whew, that's a heavy job. Um, and you've done it with such grace and such gratitude and Hey, Nicole, we're not perfect. I'm sure you made your mistakes along the way, but that's part of your message, you know? Um, that's right. I love that. Your mess is your message. Right? Can I just add that the TikToks helped me? Yeah, tell me. So um, I forgot about that. And I did forget to say something else that's really big that I have to share. Please do. So, hold on one second. Cliff, can you turn that off? I'm almost done. 
and I can hear your TV. He's playing Minecraft. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Um, TikTok, TikTok just helped me and it helped me to put a message out there to other women. But it also helped me when I was getting the infusions, chemo infusions. What can I do while I'm sitting here getting infusions? Why not do a TikTok? I bonded with the nurses. I even got nurses to do, to do a TikTok with me. They knew me by TikTok. That was my name when I walked into the um, center. So it was just a way for me to find light. And it is, it's heavy, it's hard. But if I was the only focus on the heavy and the hard things, I, I don't know how well I would have fared mentally or physically. I do have to say that I did just have surgery on Thursday of last week. I had a single mastectomy. I chose to do reconstruction a little bit later. I'll probably be all finished by the end of the year. End of the year. And the doctor called me yesterday and said, he called me at 7.30 in the morning. And he said, I just have to tell you, I know you won't been waiting to hear this, we didn't find any cancer, not in your lymph nodes, not in your tissue. We found nothing. So I had to share that. I forgot to share that part of my story. But you're cancer free. Let's give her a cheer. This is amazing, a miracle. And, you know, it's, and this is part of your story. Um, man, I, I'm just overwhelmed just by all of it. It's amazing. I can't even imagine how you feel. You probably feel like you're in some sort of dream state. So tell me now that you have heard that you're cancer free, you've endured these things and you do have a message. So what are you going to do with this story? Oh, what am I going to do with this story? I'm never going to stop telling this story. So I told you that I did get a promotion and I found so many, so many, I have chemo brain, so forgive me. I lose words often, but I found so many um, things that I can liken to every day. So mm -hmm. I can share my story of how I thought chemo was going to be the hardest thing ever. There's no way I can do this. And then I did it. So the same thing in life, in your job, in whatever, when you, I, I just, I feel like I can share those moments with others in, in work. When people find things just so hard, I can say, I can relate. I thought that I was never going to be able to get through chemo. I thought, I don't care that millions of women have done it or millions of people have done it. I can't do it. Um, so I, th I think the message is um, finding gratitude mm -hmm. in every day, every day. It finding that I can in the moments where you feel like I just cannot mm -hmm. staying prayerful, staying positive and being going outside of your comfort zone. So me and my bald head today is very <laughs> much outside of my comfort zone. My youngest son has asked, he's 12 and he has asked me one day, mom, can you just go outside with your bald head? And now I have peach fuzz. I have hair growing back, but can you just go outside with your bald head? And I said, I, I don't know that I'm ready. I wear these, um, wraps or wigs at times but I thought why not show up today when that was the first thing I was worried about was my hair why don't I show up today on this show and go outside of my comfort zone and show me in all of my glory well you look beautiful so I mean you just are you're just like glowing you look gorgeous I I like you both <laughs> I'm like, you're like Sinead O'Connor. Um, she oh. can pull it off, you know, she's just beautiful, just like you. And um, man, I, I want to open this up because I, I'm sure there's a few ladies out here. And those of you that didn't get to join us live and you're watching this later, please put questions that you may have for Nicole. Maybe you're experiencing some things. Maybe you're concerned. Maybe you're scared. This is a fear. Um, or, or, you know, I don't know, this kind of opens up a lot of, of um, questions. Um, but do you guys have any questions for Nicole? I know I've got Kyla on here, Roya and Celia, just a few people. I know it's like the middle of the afternoon, but I know more people will get to watch this and be blessed by your message. I'm going to put it on. It's going to be on YouTube and Facebook and, and also my channel. But um, I love that you said gratitude because that is what we focus on at Mary Fulton Fit, our community. Um, we talk about being grateful every day. So, you know, when you're facing a moment of not knowing what's going to happen with your life, what would you say you grabbed onto first? Like, you know, every day we worry about things like how we look, like you said, our hair, right? 
I would think the same thing if I was going into chemo because I don't have much. All I know is the outside effects, right? Like you lose your hair, but I don't know what really happens to your body. There's probably way more that goes on. Um, but what would you say to somebody out there in that moment where you're kind of like, not sure what's going to happen? Um, so if, if they are a praying person, I would say prayer. Prayer gave me comfort eased all of my anxieties. So if that person is a praying person, that's what I would say. Mm -hmm. um, if they're not, that's okay too. There's, um, I would say, find the, find the things to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. Because every day that I was going through that battle, there was something I could be grateful for. Mm -hmm. And even if it was just that I was able to get up, open my eyes, get out of bed, walk, the simplest things, I had to find it because I had some really hard days. I was in so much pain for some of the days. Some of the chemo puts you through some really tough bone pain. And in those moments, they were very hard for me to find those um, mm -hmm. moments of gratitude. But I hung, on to, I hung on to, my husband was here really trying to help me ease in any kind of way. What if I didn't have him there you know what if I didn't have that and my kids that were trying to be a source of help to me so I would find the smallest things to be grateful for mm -hmm. focus on that because if you focus on that that's what you're going to see if you focus on what you don't have or how bad you feel or how hard it is that's all you're going to see mm -hmm. I so, love so I did the both mm -hmm. I I stayed in prayer and I, I every I used to write down I was better about writing down what I was grateful for, grateful for every day. I don't do it so much anymore, but I still take those moments to think about what I'm grateful for in this moment. I love that. I, we do have a question that says, I missed the first little bit and I will come back. Oh, okay. She didn't have a question, but um, you've got lots of hearts out here. Oh. I was going to ask you, so how has your perspective on life changed? Because it, I mean, it has to have changed. I a couple of things I say, like my, I was telling my youngest one day, I've never been able to walk my kids to school. I'm always at work, they're at school. So I've been able to walk my son to school. And I told him, hey, um, this is really cool that I get to walk with you to school. And he says, so are you saying cancer is good? No, cancer is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but I am able to slow down and see the things that are important. Mm -hmm. I was moving too fast through life that I'm not able to notice the, the small things, the important thing, the small things that may be very important. Me walking my son to school, that is a big deal. I will never be able to do that again. He's, um, it was a perfect time. He's a sixth grader. So when he's in seventh grade, he'll probably say, mom, you don't need to walk me to school. You don't need to pick me up from school. But at this moment, this weird school year, it was walk me to school or um, just, there's all, so I went to Hawaii a week before surgery. I didn't want to go with my bald head. I didn't want to go with the extra weight on me, but why not? So I think it's those things too. Why wait? What are we waiting on? Why are we waiting to have the perfect this, the perfect that? Have fun. I went with my cousins. I had an amazing time. So I, I think my perspective is, I, I think it's the same thing I said earlier. I feel like a broken record. I, I'm going to find the things that I'm grateful for every day. Um, I'm going to take, slow down, have more empathy for people and, um, and stop waiting on perfect moments. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, there's no such thing as a perfect moment. Just, uh, just, do it, just jump in. <laughs> so I don't know if you know that about my brand, but it's all about just jump in and we're just going. So, you know, Mary, I followed you for years and I look at your body all the time and I say, I got to get back. So as soon as this doctor releases me, <laughs> I will be right. I will be She's jumping in. The garage. She's <laughs> going to the garage. <laughs> I will be jumping in because that's, that's something that I need to take time to slow down. That's important. It's my health, right? That's something that I need to take the time for me. I love that. I love that. Oh, thank you so much for blessing us with your time because time is so precious and your story and you're blessing so many women out there. Oh, we've got, we've got somebody here. I, she said, I agree. When a curveball comes your way, you have to get off the carousel and slow down. I too went to Hawaii with our children. When I experienced huge pain in my life, you are an inspiration. 
Oh, thank you. Thank That's you. That's Catherine Clayton. Yeah, I I'm love gonna, that. So I have to get off I'm, because I'm so nervous. I'm about to start crying on here. Oh, no, you're doing good. And then Kyla, um, she's my Canadian blonde, is what I call her. Canadian Kyla. Uh, she's uh, she says I love your message. I could listen to you all day long. So inspiring. Hey, oh, would you tell us how they can follow you? They may want to follow you and see more about your story as you're going. Sure. <laughs> So I guess I post the most um, on TikTok about this story, and, and that's Principal Childs, okay. uh, principal, as in school principal, and then C-H-I-L-E-S. Perfect. That's on TikTok. And then where else am I, Mary? Instagram. Okay, what, what are you on Instagram? What's your name on Instagram? Instagram. I'm on Instagram. Ms. Nick, M-I-Z-N-I-K-1 okay. on Instagram. Okay. And... I'm on Facebook under you're my, Facebook. you're just Nicole Childs on Facebook. I attached you. So it's on your page right now. Oh, so okay. I, cool. I shared it. So I, well, I, I tagged you, so you'll be able to grab it and then put it on your page. So, um, okay. but we just, thank you so much for taking this time. It's so fun to see your beautiful face and um, from the whole community, we appreciate you at Mary Fulton fit and um, you are a wonder woman to us. So we, we thank you for sharing your story of, getting stronger through your mind, your body, and your soul. And, you know, just jumping into your life and doing things and not waiting for the perfect body, the perfect, whatever it is that we keep waiting on the perfect moment. There are no perfect moments. They're just the moments that we live in. And we make, we make each moment today. <laughs> I went stream live from three different things. And I was so excited that I finally did it. And I was all excited. And guess what happened? It was a train wreck. It was all like glitchy like this because it was too much for my computer. My computer had ended up crashing. <laughs> oh, that's okay. You jumped in. No perfect. Moment. No, it's okay. You know, like, but I just, um, everything's learning. And so anytime a big mistake happens, I used to beat myself up. Like everybody's going to not like me or whatever. And now I don't think that anymore. I'm like, Hey, I'm just learning. Just give me some grace. We're going to do this. I figured it out. I just probably need like a giant Megatron computer to do that. So we just won't do that for a while. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that there's not a, ever a perfect time. And even when you do jump in, it may not be perfect because nothing's perfect. And there's going to be obstacles. So there's going to be trials no matter what, right? But it's like you said, grabbing on the gratitude, grabbing on the things that most matter. So nobody's going to remember that my video was glitchy when they're on their deathbed. Nobody, no. nobody's going to even think about that. No. So I just decided I'm not going to carry those burdens anymore. I used to carry those burdens of not pleasing everybody and messing things up. And now I'm like, no, my mess is my message. So if you're on my channel and there's some messes, messes, <laughs> it's part of the story. We started in a garage full of junk. We moved into the washer and dryer. We moved into some curtains. Now we've got a studio. It's just going to keep changing and growing. And, and I so appreciate everyone that's been here with me as I've battled all of these things, like the, the, the um, crazy things. So um, by you have inspired us by battling the things that we are most scared of. Because we can deal with technology and people being mean to us and all that. But when it's our bodies, that is where we always like, that's where the fear is. And you're so strong. You faced it like a Wonder Woman with <laughs> faith your shield of faith, your sword of truth, you know, right. and so praise God for your healing. And uh, we want to keep hearing about it. So everybody follow her and hopefully, you know, maybe you can meet back with us when you're ready to come and work out and share some more stories with us. We'd love to have you on again, maybe in a couple of months and you can share more progress. <laughs> I have some more here. Absolutely. Thank you. You are the ultimate wonder woman. I just appreciate this platform. Thank you. So awesome. Thank I have you no so idea much. what this means for me. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And uh, Roya says, uh, uh, Roya, um, she's also from, Roya, are you in Canada or are you in the UK? It's one of the two. And she says, thank you for your courage and message. Life is short and unpredictable. Life for today. And then Kyla says, hope to see you in the upcoming challenge groups. Oh yeah, we're going to reel you in into one of these. And then uh, Catherine Clayton, thank you so much. May God continue to protect you and sustain you. Oh, thank you.
Well, thank, thank you so you. much. God bless you. Enjoy your day. Go get some lunch, Wonder Woman. I'm starving. I haven't eaten anything. <laughs> oh, after my Wonder Woman? Okay. Yeah, let's do our Wonder Woman. And I'm going to show you our what we do for our community. So we always do Stronger Together, and then we go Mind, Body, and Soul. Okay. So ready? So I'm going to say Stronger Together, Mind, okay. yeah, Body, body. and soul. soul. Yay. God bless you. <laughs> clip in the background we love you nicole i'll be i'm um, putting this on youtube and everything okay okay love you bye